And I feel like maybe in some way that that reminds me of what you just said about Steven Pinker, which is that people can write books, you know, these these huge, uh, well-known intellectuals, very powerful individuals in their own right, will write a book not so much to uh, change the opinions of anybody. You know, this isn't meant to enlighten anybody on anything. It was really meant to display to, you know, like you mentioned, some of his people, the people that are a part of his world, that I'm ready to, I, I, I am totally with the program, and I will try to rationalize everything that is happening, um, that you guys are doing, the decisions that you're making. And so that, that to me is uh, what I yeah. get from what you're saying. Well, yeah. I, and I think... I think that it is also, though, meant to um, score a big point uh, in terms of the world of public opinion among people who uh, may be in the sort of see themselves as in the kind of moderate uh, um, sort of milieu and who believe that they do care about progress and the future of the world. And they and it's and they sort of you know, they may not be sure exactly um, what that means. And I think that this concept of progress is hugely, hugely important. Um, in fact, I, I, actually, for my book, The Patterning Instinct, I wrote a, a chapter on the history of the idea of progress that I ended up cutting from the book at the end just because <laughs> the, the book was getting a little too long and it I felt like it could, you know, it, 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 the book could survive without it. But I've been really interested in this idea for a long time because if, in a way, it's the most important idea of the modern era. So if, you know, something like, if we look back at the past during the last most of the last two millennia, um, say the idea of Christianity, at least in the in European thought, um, and the sense of your soul and saving your soul for eternal salvation, yeah, that was the the absolute important idea that that drove um, you know generations of people around the whole society to like choose what they did with their life, and in the, in modern times, what's in, interesting is this notion of progress has been this rallying call behind, you know, you can either, you could, from the 19th century onwards, you could be a, um, a Marxist or you could be a capitalist. You could be um, into, you know, technology or you could be into a political reform. No matter where you're at, there was this sense that um, if you were on the side of progress, that was what really mattered. That gave you a sense of meaning in life. It's almost like it was the underlying foundation of where meaning comes from um, as uh, the modern age begins to sort of leave behind uh, the sort of uh, Christian or monotheistic approach to meaning. So progress is hugely important. And that's why I feel there is, if, if you will, there is a kind of an intellectual battle going on as to get who gets to own progress. You know, so in the early part of the 20th century, capitalists would say we're the ones who are responsible for progress. But there's, there was this very powerful trend all the way from the French Revolution onwards of uh, which turned into like Marxist ideas or communist ideas. They know progress is actually, you know, capitalism was part of this evolutionary progress of culture. And now we're moving into a place where power needs to go more to the people or whatever. So there was this real battle over that. And then in the later part of the 20th century, of course, with the collapse of communism, um, it's as though the, the sort of neoliberal worldview got to totally own this idea of progress. And that's where um, a book like Steven Pinker's um, is, is what it's really trying to do is to say, like, if you believe in progress, which, as I say, I think is the fundamental underlying um, um, belief system, if you will, for um, many, many people around the world, um, then then you must support the neoliberal economic system um, with capitalism and big corporations and everything that goes, and inequalities and all the things that go along with that. And I feel that it's absolutely essential to um, sort of really um, hit back on that and say, no, that is absolutely not true. Actually, if you believe in progress, um, which I do um, fundamentally, um, then it, quite the opposite. You need to be looking at what is wrong in um, in people's lives, in the lives of the natural world right now in this generation. And you need to be on the cutting edge 
to like push that forward. And we are part, you know, there, there is, I mean, there is a scenario where we are headed for collapse and this whole story of progress is just one that is going to, you know, be looking rather, um, just tragically ironic um, in a sort of post-collapse uh, era. And there's also a scenario where we're going through, you know, one of these very difficult cycles in a, a larger scheme, a, a larger arc of moral progress in human society. And that, um, you know, and that we're part of something even bigger that is hopeful. But no matter which way you look at it, um, it does not argue for Stephen Pinker's approach to that. Um, this this system that we're living in right now is a system causing massive destruction. And to the extent that it had any part in progress in prior generations, that is now defunct. It is now at this point causing um, such harm to humans, uh, to the natural world, and to any sense of uh, a kind of human morality that that's what I feel we need to be aware of, like day by day.